Now, remember that OWL, O-W-L, is the web ontology language, and this is the OWL ontology that is behind DBpedia. And like any ontology, or thesaurus, it's a hierarchy, it's a tree structure. The OWL ontology is derived from several classification schemes. It's derived from Wikipedia, it's derived from WordNet, which is a lexical database of English and synonyms and antonyms in English. It's derived from some other sources as well. But the point is that all of these things are combined to create a single hierarchy of the intention, of course, is that it should cover all of the entities um, or types of entities that exist in the entire universe. So as you might expect, top level is a thing. Now a thing has a set of properties and this is the entry for the thing entity. Now, thing has properties. It has abbreviation, it has abstract, it has access date and you know alias, all kinds of various properties, some of which are going to make sense for whatever the subcategory of thing is that you're referring to, and some won't make sense. So, for example, if you're talking about Berlin, Berlin is pretty far down in the family tree from thing. I believe that the that the uh, the tree is thing, and a subcategory of thing is place. A subcategory of place is populated place, and then settlement, and then you get to city. So city is pretty far down in the tree. So something like animal, if you're talking about a city just doesn't really make sense as a property that gets inherited. And remember from previous units that all the properties of a parent entity get inherited by the child entities. So animal is a property that gets inherited all the way down to city. That doesn't really make sense, but that's okay. The dumbed down principle says you can just ignore properties that you don't need. But on the other hand, something like administrative status would make sense if we're talking about a city. Now, everything is a subcategory of thing, or a sub-subcategory, or a sub-sub-subcategory, etc., etc., all the way on down the tree. So one of the first level subcategories of thing is agent. So let's take a look at agent, and this is the record, the entry for agent. Now agent has a long list of properties as well. Again, you get abbreviation and abstract and access date and administrative status and whatnot. In the comment, which you could consider the scope note for agent. It says, analogous to friend of a friend agent. We'll talk about friend of a friend later. An agent is an entity that acts. The superclass of person and organization. So person and organization are two subcategories of agent. And here we have the entry for the entity person, which again, has a long list of properties, including things like active years and age and allegiance and whatnot. Each property of person or any entity has a domain. And a domain is the type of thing that that property applies to. So most of these, you'll notice, apply to person which makes sense because we're looking at the entry for person. But age, for example, applies to agent. So age is a property that was inherited from the parent entity, 
agent. Because any agent can have an age. So all again, all of the properties from agent and from thing above that are inherited by person, but then person piles on a set of properties of its own of which all of these are examples. Each property of person and any entity also has a range. And a range is the data type of that property. And we've seen this sort of thing before, of course. Some properties can be strings, some can be numbers, in this case integer, some can be dates, some can be other kinds of entities. Alma mater is a type of entity educational institution. So the data type of the different properties can be different things, can be text, can be integers, can be other entities. Now, remember that DBpedia is editable by anyone, like Wikipedia, like any kind of, you know, community open source project, and anyone can add entities or edit properties of entities, which may partly explain why there's such a lengthy list of properties that what makes sense for one person, for one organization in one context, won't for others. But the idea is that every possible property gets added to the entry for an entity. And over time, it gets the OWL ontology gets built up to be broader and broader in scope. The goal of DBpedia, why DBpedia is so large, why it connects to so many other classification schemes, and why public editing is allowed, is specifically so that it can grow over time. Now, DBpedia's documentation about itself calls it the nucleus for the web of data. And remember, I described the semantic web earlier as the web of data, as opposed to the web of documents, which is the more traditional web. In other words, DBpedia is trying to position itself as the nucleus of the semantic web. Again, this is these figures here are from DBpedia's documentation about itself. The English language version of DBpedia describes three point, almost 3.8 million things. And 2.3 million things are classified in the English language ontology behind DBpedia. But there are 111 languages represented by different versions of DBpedia, and there's 10.5 million interlinkings, links between the English language and other language versions of entities in DBpedias, all of the different DBpedias, and collectively across all of these language versions of DBpedia, 20.8 million things are described. Now, there are more than 20.8 million things in the universe. But look, you have to start somewhere, right? The idea here is just this. If your goal is to build an infrastructure to allow data about absolutely everything to be represented online, you have to make it international, you have to make it cross-language, you have to make it expandable, you have to make it possible for new schemas to easily connect up with existing infrastructure. And that's exactly what DBpedia is trying to do. That's exactly what the whole linked data movement is trying to do.